In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the basics of Slider Revolution 6. I'm going to take you through the first stages of creating your very own animated slider with multiple slides. We're going to take a look at some basic features. We're going to take a look at the basics of animation and also some more advanced features like things like global layers. So if you're interested, join me as I take you through the whole process of creating your first multi-image slider with Slider Revolution 6. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where I help you get more from WordPress. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so Slider Revolution 6. Before we start and take a look at building things, I just want to say this is a sponsored video by the lovely people over at Slider Revolution. So if you want to check things out, take a look at the link in the description below so you can find out more about Slider Revolution 6. So I'm in the dashboard, I've gone ahead and installed Slider Revolution 6 and we're now ready to start creating our first slider. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the left hand side, we're going to choose Slider Revolution from the options. Once you do that, that's going to open up the new interface. I'm going to collapse this menu down to give us a little bit more room. Before we get the ball rolling, let's just take a quick look at the type of thing we're going to create. Now this is a little bit more complex than I'm going to show you, but all the techniques that are being used are exactly the same ones as we'll cover in this video. So what we're taking a look at, if we just preview this, you'll see we've got a background image, we've got a logo that animates in, and we've got some text that animates in as well. So let's take a look at how we can start building things like this out. Okay, so the first thing we need to make sure of is that you understand that there's two basic different versions between Slider Revolution 6. There's the free version that generally tends to come with themes, so it's pre-packaged with themes. That has all the core functionality of Slider Revolution 6, it just doesn't have the template options and the add-on options. So just bear with me, when we go through this I'm going to cover some of those templates so you can see how to easily and speed up the sort of the process of designing your slides. However, if you have the version that's packaged with a the theme, you won't have access to that. The second option is where you purchase this as its own product and you have a license key that will unlock everything you have available inside the full Slider Revolution 6. But like I say, just bear in mind that this doesn't cripple the actual editor itself. You can still follow along and create all your slides from scratch. You just sacrifice some of the things like the templates and the add-ons. So before we jump in and start taking a look at creating our first blank module or first blank slider, let's take a quick look at this interface. You can see we've got a couple of options like a new blank module, which is what we're going to do to create our first slide inside our new slider. A new module from a template, so like I say, if you have the full version of this with the license and everything, you'll have access to that. You can do a manual import, so you may have created a slider somewhere else that you want to import into this and then use that as either a sort of exact copy or you may want to use it as the basis for something else. You can do that and import them directly into here. And the fourth option is the add-ons. Like I say, this is something you need to have the full premium version, not a bundled version. Underneath that, we've got any of the modules or sliders that we've created. And you can see I've got a couple of examples already created. If we take a look at the top, we've got modules, updates, activation, news, globals, and so on. And what this will do is if we click any of those, it'll take us through to the relevant section, show us all the different updates, all the different update history, if we've got the current version, the system requirements, if we're meeting all those things, and so on and so forth. So you can take a look through there if you want to. However, today we're going to focus on creating our first blank module. So let's click on new blank module. Once we've done that, that'll take us through it, load the content, go through a few bits and pieces, and then it'll take us to a start guide or a quick guide. So if you are new to Slider Revolution 6 and you want to have that sort of quick start guide or the quick guide, you can easily come into this and see exactly what to do. However, we're going to say we're going to quit that. We don't want the start guide, and that'll take us into the actual editor itself. Now, one of the first things you're going to want to do before you start anything when it comes to Slider Revolution 6 is set the basic layout. If we're under the section, you can see we've got the option for module general options. And in there, we've got the layout option. If we click on there, you can see we can toggle the type of slider, a scene or a carousel, whether we want this to be auto, full width or full screen. And we also then go down and set the browser width based upon the device that's being viewed. So for example, we can set one width and one height to work with a desktop, a different set of dimensions then for dealing with a smaller device like a laptop. We can also set things up then for tablets and also for mobiles. Now I'm going to leave those at the default values in this video. We will come back in a future video and take a look at how we can deal with these things and how we can set things up to work on across those devices. For now, we're just going to work with the default values. That works perfectly fine for this particular tutorial. 
Now, if you look at this, it looks quite different to any previous versions. However, pretty much everything is still here. It's just been organized in a little bit more logical fashion, tidied the interface and made it a little bit fresher, a little bit more modern. If you want to check out the new things over version 5, I'll put a link in the description to the previous video on Slider Revolution 6 that we did. It'll give you an update to a lot of the new functions. Today, we're going to be focusing on building our sliders. Okay, so let's take a look. Across the top, you can see we've got back, which will take us back out of this, our slides, our add layer, the size that we're working with, and all those kinds of things. We've also got a range of icons, since we can do single select, drag to select, and so on. We can undo and redo. We can enable different size devices, so we can check out what our slide is going to look like on notebooks, tablets, mobiles, and so on, which obviously is a good thing to do. You've then got the sort of context help, you've got inline help and various other different options. We don't need to worry about those right now. What we are interested in though are these sections across the top right hand side. And you can see we've got the module general options. We can click through, we've got the navigation options. Next, we've got the slide options. And then finally, we've got the editor view and the layer view options. So there are a ton of different things. We're gonna to touch some of these today, but this is just a basic introduction to creating your first multi-image slider, okay. Underneath that, we've got save and preview. And then finally, we've got this main area then, which is our timeline editor, where we can fine tune and tweak all the various different timings inside our slider. So we can create animations inside here. We can set up when they come in inside our, our sort of slider timeline. Tons of really cool things you can do in this. So you can get incredibly complex on here if you want to, but you can keep it really simple as well. Then inside there at the top, we've got the main area window, which is our editing area. And this is where we'll see exactly what we're working with and any guidelines and any sort of limitations that we have based upon any settings we may configure. Okay, so let's kick things off now by creating our first slide. First thing you want to do is put a background image in there. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the options that allow us to do exactly that. So you come over to this slide options and you can see the first option in there is background. We can click and you can see that selected. We click anything else, we'll get different options underneath in the context area. So we can easily see exactly what we're working with. It's highlighted in the top area and then all the options that are applicable to that particular setting are all listed underneath it. Go back to our background and you can see by default it's set to transparent and that's exactly what you can see with this little checker box. If we come down to this option, you can see we now have a range of different backgrounds we can apply. An image, an external image if it's stored somewhere else. Transparent, which is where it currently is. We can set it to be colored if you want to put a color or a gradient or something in there. We can also use a range of different videos from YouTube, Vimeo, and also self-hosted HTML5 videos. For this, we're going to start off by creating an image. Then we've got two options. We've got Media Library, which is where we upload those directly to WordPress ourselves, or the Object Library, which is a series of different objects and images and so on that's part of the premium version of Slider Revolution 6. So we're going to stick to working with confines that we have, which is basically anything we've uploaded. So we're going to say Media Library. That'll open up your normal Media Library inside WordPress itself. And we're going to choose this background image. So we're going to select that. We're going to say Insert. That now inserts that into our slider. So that's the background setup on there. Now anything we put on top, any layers we create, much the same as Photoshop, they will sit on top of this background layer and we'll see those in the timeline editor below the main window. So everything we add in, we'll see those in there. So we can control exactly how this is interacted with as well with inside our page confines. If we come down to our image settings, you can see the source size. We can click on there and we can choose what source size you want. Now, by default, WordPress will create a range of different size images for you when you upload something. You can have the original size, a thumbnail, medium, large, and so on. So depending upon the settings you have inside WordPress, if you've changed these or anything, you'll have different values for those. So use the right kind of image size to make sure you optimize the load time on your website using any kind of slider that you create. Below that, we've got the background fit. And we've got four options, cover, which will cover inside the area that we have to work with, which is generally what you'll tend to use if you're creating a hero slider image at the top of your website. You've then got contain, which will make sure it sits inside the confines and doesn't get resized. You've got percentage, which you can set, and you can see we can tweak that to get any kind of thing that we want on there. And we've got auto. We're gonna leave this to cover. And then underneath, you've got some options. Now, if you use something like Elementor, or Page Builders, and things like that, you're gonna be used to dealing with background images and then setting things like if they repeat, how they repeat, and all those kinds of things. We're gonna make sure this says no repeat because we're using cover. We want this to be contained inside our slider. However, if you wanted to, you could easily use the repeat option and you have repeat, repeat X, and repeat Y. 
Then you've got the position. So this is going to be any kind of anchor point that you use inside Slider Revolution for this particular background image. That's where the anchor point will be used. So we've got it set to the center at the moment, but you can choose any of the other anchor points. And you can see this is then going to change the way the image is displayed inside our slider area. So pretty cool. We've then got the alt attribute and the title attribute, and we've got some options in there. We can use the media library. So if we assign a alt tag directly inside our media library, which I would always suggest you do for SEO purposes, then this will automatically apply that to the background. You could, if you wanted to, use the file name instead, or you can use custom, at which point you can put your own custom alt tag in for this particular instance of this image when you're working with Slider Revolution. We we'll leave that back to media library. You've then got the title attribute, and again, we've got the same options, media library, file name, and custom. So you can set what you want inside there. So that's the background image put in there, ready for us, all set up. We can now create additional layers and put those on top. So let's do that next. Next up, we want to drop in a logo. That's going to go in the top left-hand corner. So to do that, we need to create another layer. So we're going to come up, we see we've got add layer at the top. And when we come over that, we've got a ton of different options available to us inside there for the different types of layers that we can create. Now, for this example, we're going to just choose an image option. And you can see from there, we've got WordPress library, object library, or empty placeholder. So you can easily build things up directly from inside here, choosing exactly what you want. For this one, we want the WordPress library. So we're going to click on that. That'll take us over to the library like we did before for the background. We're going to choose our logo and insert that directly inside here. You can see now that drops our logo into the top left-hand corner, at which point if we want to reposition that, we can reposition it easily. If we want to resize it, we can resize it just by using these little drag handles. And you can see that allows us to change the size of this very, very easily. So we can set this up exactly where we want. You also notice when we resize this, it shows us those nine little squares that tells us exactly where that resize point is coming from which is why when we drag this out, the top left-hand corner looks like it's pinned in place. That's because that's where our anchor point is currently set. Obviously, if you want to change that, we could change it, but we're happy with that. We'll leave it as it is. So now we've got that set up inside there. Go to the right-hand side. You can see we've got a lot of different options for various different things. We've got the content, the style, the size and position, animations, loop players, tons of different things. Then underneath that, we've got the position and size options because that's currently selected. And as you can see, we can set this up. We can base the alignment upon various different things. So we can choose the horizontal alignment, the vertical alignment. We can set an X, Y offset if we want to. We can just do whatever we need to do to make sure we get pixel perfect positioning. We can do that very easily. We can also adjust the custom size of this. So you can see we've got custom size at the moment. However, we could say we want full width and that'll give us full width across the entire sort of scene that we're working with, the slider we're working with. However, we're gonna come back and we're gonna just set that back to custom size and reposition that where we want it to be and that looks pretty good. Okay, so that's the first part. We've now added that in there. If we take a look at the bottom, you can see we've now got a new layer called image zero which we can rename easily by coming up to the top and just changing that. So we're going to call this logo. There we go. We now renamed that so we can see exactly what we're working with. If you take a look on the timeline now, you can see that's positioned and said it's now logo. So it makes life a lot easier for us. Now that we've added this logo layer, if we take a look at the timeline underneath, you can see that we've got a couple of things on there. We've got this 1000 and this little marker, and then it's 300. That's basically the time that's going to take for any kind of fade in, fade out, any kind of entrance animation to take effect. We can easily extend those by grabbing the ends of them. And you can see we can just that very easily get exactly what we want. We can reposition that inside the actual timeline itself. So if we move this over to the right hand side, we'll see that what happens is we can control exactly when that entrance animation takes effect. So if we click play, you'll see the background comes in and then we have the animation for the logo. If we want to make that quicker. We can easily shrink that down. Let's run that again and we'll find that the fade in for the background takes about one second and then the actual animation for the logo is considerably quicker about a third of a second so we take a look and there we go so it's easy to adjust the positioning of those adjust the timing of those adjust the stacking order so we can control exactly when any of these different animations come in now what if we don't want to have just a simple fade in animation we want to do something else how exactly can we do that well again it's pretty simple if we come over we select the item we want, the layer that we want, making sure that we can see that. If we come over now to the keyframe section on the right hand side, if you don't see this, just click on the animation option. Once we're inside there, you can see we've got in and we've got out. 
If we click on in, you can see this now gives us a range of different transitions that we can use. For the transition option we have, let's come down and choose something. Let's say something like slide transitions. And from there, you can see we've got a lot of extra options inside there. So you can see if we mouse over, it'll show us exactly what that transition will look like before we actually apply it to the layer that we're currently working with. So let's just do something like long from top and you can see it'll animate in. And now if we want to check that out, we can simply come over, hit play, and we'll find now that that animates in from the top. Now don't worry about the purple border around it. That's just a selection border to say what's currently selected. So you can see it as a kind of separate from the background if you've got a quite a complex background, which makes it difficult to see what's exactly going on. Okay, so that's how easy it is to change those transitions. We've also taken a look at the, at the layer section. We can also see it's very easy to adjust how long the transition lasts for. We can adjust the transitions for the in and both the in and out. So you can see we could have something different for the out transition. So this makes it very easy to control exactly how your items animate onto the screen and then animate off the screen. And if we scroll over to the right hand side, you can see we've got this section which tells you to wait for a period of time. And then we're going to have the out transition before we potentially go to the next slide. So you can select that. You can come up to the out whatever you want to do on there and you can adjust that and set it up to be exactly the way that you want. So it's very easy to do now. Now we're taking a look at layers and we're taking a look at the timeline and animation effects. How do we go through and add an extra slide in? Well, let's save this first of all. So that's our first slide saved. Now all we need to do is come back up and we come to slide and you can see we can add a slide global layers or we've got number one new slide. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over and say we want a blank slide. That'll then take a moment, load in, and you can see now we're back to exactly the same point that we were right at the beginning where we've got a blank slide with a transparent background and nothing else on it. So this time we're going to do the same thing to put a background in, but I'm going to show you how you can take advantage of some of these predefined layouts to speed up the process of building out your slides to make them look great across the board and also help you keep consistency of design. So this time, let's just come through and do a different background. So you can see we're on the slide options. Background is already selected. And let's just change that from transparent to image. We'll click on media library and we'll open up an image we're going to use for the background. So let's just choose this one, which is sort of an abstract background. We'll click on insert and we're now ready to put some content onto this slide. So let's take a look at a couple of different ways we can do this. Let's start off by coming up to add layer. We choose text. Now you can see when we choose text, we've got two different types of options. We've got quick style headline and quick style content. So what we're going to do is we're going to say quick style headline. We're going to click on that. That's going to take a second or so to load in some additional fonts. And then you can see on the right hand side, we now have a range of predefined layout ideas, stylings, for example, with regards to headings. You also see we've got content and shadow. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down and take a look at what I think is going to be a good heading. So let's click on this one and you can see that now puts in a new layer. Come to content, you can see if we wanted to, we could change this over and add in content. However, headlines is perfectly fine. So once we've done that, we can click, we can close this down and that'll take us back into the normal editor view, at which point we can now go through and start changing the content. So let's go to the content tab and you can see new layer is already in there, which is what we can see at this point. However, we can easily change that and we'll just put this and put slider revolution six. So now we put that in there, we can now easily change anything we want on there. So let's just say, for example, we want to adjust the position of the slide in animation, adjust the duration of that a little bit. And if we want to, we can easily come in and say we want to change the in animation. And we'll say we want to set this to be, again, slide from top. So we have consistency with the previous one. So now if we just hit play on this, we'll see there's our transitions. And all we had to do is set a background pull in a predefined style for our heading and it's all pretty much done for us. So it's incredibly simple to do. And again, like I say, we've got all the options we want underneath to make adjustments to that. We can change the name of this and we can just call this header one. And you can see that automatically, once we enter on there, we'll change that inside the timeline as well. So it's very easy for us to see what's going on. If we want to, we can adjust anything on this. You can see the basics, we've got power ease in and out. We could change that to anything we want and adjust that however we want to. So hit preview on there and we can take a little look. So there's our first slide with our animation for our logo. And after the set period of time, we'll then go to the next slide that we've just created. And there we go with our animation in effect. So all incredibly simple to do. So let's just close that down. Okay, so now we've set that up, we've created some really simple layouts. 
What if we want to add some interactivity into this? What if we want to do something like add a button to click and go somewhere else? Well, again, it's incredibly simple with Slider Revolution 6. Come to add a layer. This time we're going to choose a button. So we click on button. We can then choose from any of the predefined styles to use those as a starting point. And again, remember, these are just starting points. So if you want to, you can change any parameter, any of the text, the colors, anything like that whatsoever. So let's come down and we're going to say we're going to use this orange one. So we're going to click and you can see that puts it into place on our screen, which doesn't look quite right. So let's just bring that down there. We're going to bring our section down as well. So now we've got click here. Let's close this down. And now we can set the parameters up for this. So you can see if we want to change the font, we can change the font. We can change any of those things. So let's click on content and you can see click here is not what we want. So we say click for information. There we go. So we've now adjusted the styling on that. If we want to add an icon in, we can add an icon in there as well. We can also go through the toggle state so we can change that if we want to. Well, we won't worry about that for the moment. We'll leave it set as is. So how do we set it now to do something? We obviously created a button, but it doesn't go anywhere. Well, the next stage, again, is really, really easy. Now, when you create any kind of layer and you want it to do something, you have to assign an action to it. So with the button selected, come over to the right hand side, making sure you've got the last option, which is the layers option. And in there, you can see we've got actions. We click on actions. This now gives us a ton of different actions we can assign and also how we want to trigger those actions. All we want to do for this one is really, really simple. We're going to say we want a simple link, but obviously there are a ton more options inside here to do various different things. So I suggest exploring these and seeing what they can do. So let's say we want a simple link. You can see that now puts that in there. Triggered by simple link, we can copy it, we can delete it, and we can adjust it. So triggered by, we're going to click on there. You can see it says trigger memory. We can leave that as it is. Say reset after each loop. That's perfectly fine. What we're going to do then is click on this to make sure the action selected. We've then got the interaction is click. But if we want to change that, you can see we can have mouse enter or mouse leave. So you may want to have certain actions that once your mouse enters that, something will happen. Well, you can do that by just changing the interaction event. Then you've got the action type, the link URL, the same window, and all the kind of things you expect to see when you're creating any kind of link. So what we need to do is change that and put in the link that we want to use. So we're just going to take this over to my website. So wptuts.co.uk. There we go. Target, same window. No, we're going to say we'll have that in a new window. Link type, you can see select from list. Nothing's in there, so we don't have anything saved out. You can set a no follow if you want to or a follow link and you can also set an action delay. So you may want to have something happen only after, say, a second where you can set an action delay in there in milliseconds. So now we've set the action for this. We've done. So all we need to do is close that down and our action is now applied to that particular button. Now, button two doesn't make a lot of sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that from button two and we're going to call this uh, website link. So that makes a lot more sense. Again, hit enter. Now, obviously, the animation is a little bit off at the moment. So if we play this, you're going to see the button comes on before the background, all kinds of weird stuff. So we just need to adjust that. So we're going to drag this over. We'll make that just a little longer, not too long. And we'll adjust the position of our main content. So now if we come back, we can see let's hit play. And then our button comes on. So already looking a lot better. Now there's one more thing I want to place inside this. What we're going to do is we're going to come say add another layer. So we're going to come down and say text and we say quick style content because we don't want this to be a heading. We want it to be content. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick what are the predefined styles that we have here. So let's try something like that. That looks okay, but let's choose that one instead. What we're going to do now is close this down. We're going to reposition this where we want it to be, which is going to be underneath this. And then we're going to come over to the content area and we're going to paste in a little bit of content. And there we go. Let's just drop that in it. Now, I don't want this to look the way it does. I don't want it all on one line. I want it to kind of line up in line with where it says slider revolution six. So what you could do is you can resize this box and we're just going to drag that over there. So it's in line, but you can see nothing actually happens to the text. The box is like is all lined up tidy, but not the text. So how can we deal with that? Again, pretty straightforward. Let's go to the content option. So again, making sure we've got that specific layer targeted. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down and you can see we've got line break. So we're going to click on there and you can see it says content based. We're going to check that to be width based. So what that's going to do is that's going to use the width of the box that we've just resized to make sure that it sits inside there exactly the way we want it to. So now what we can do is 
we can quickly adjust this. We're going to stick, just drag this down a little bit and do the same thing then for the slider revolution title. So everything is now sitting roughly where we want it to be. However, we don't know if it's all lined up together. So can we actually go ahead, select all these different elements and then line them up to make sure everything is pixel perfect? And again, the answer is yes, you can. So what we're going to do is if we come to the arrow, you can see when we mouse over that, we have three different options, single select, add to selection and drag to select. So we can, if we want to say drag to select, and you see now that changes to a little cross here. And now I can drag over those different items to select them. And now all those are selected. So what I could do now is I can go through to the size and position. Then I can just click on alignment to make sure everything is aligned the way I want. And you see that now positions that based upon the layer alignment. If we wanted to, we could also set that to scene alignment. We could adjust those any we want. But we've got those selected. We now have those grouped together so we can easily just position that where we want. If we want to fine tune, we can do that. However, I'm going to do it by eye. And I'm just going to come up, I'm going to grab this and just drag this up a little bit. And again, we can come up, drag the select, or we could use the shift key, select all those, make sure they're all aligned together. And again, I'll just reposition those when they're all selected to where I want. Okay, so we've now set things up all nice and tidy. We just need to quickly name text layer three so it makes some sense. What I'm going to do is I'm going to target that, change that, and we're going to call this description. Hit enter. And then we're going to adjust the position of that. So that's the second item I want to come on. So we're going to drag that over like so. If we want to reorder these, we can easily just drag those down to position them exactly how we want. So then we can adjust the order of these, adjust the duration if we want to. So we set that to the same duration as we've got the link button. There we go. Or rough enough. So let's just run this back now and hit play. Background fades in and you can see everything else comes in. If you want to change those animations, we can do that. However, we've got some basics in there. Now we created quite a little bit more complex layout. So let's hit save on there to make sure everything is committed. And once we've done that, we're going to go through and we're going to preview this. So let's click on preview. That's going to pull up and you can see there's our first animation and our logos in there. But we've got to wait now until the next animation comes on board and oh, that's a bit boring. You can adjust the timing on there and so on, but not everybody wants to sit around and wait. They might want to click through and do it themselves. So how can we do that? Well, I'm going to show you two ways. Now, the first way is probably the easiest and the way that I would recommend doing it. The second way is going to open you up and show you how you can use another feature inside Slider Revolution. Let's take the easy way first. What I'm going to do is under the layer options, we're going to come out of that. We're going to come over to the navigation options. And inside there, you can see we've got arrows and that's selected. You can also see that arrow type is disabled. Let's just enable that and that will open up and show us a range of different arrow types. So we've got arrow style. We can click and we can come through and you can see we mouse over any of these on screen. We'll see the different look for each one of those. So let's go for this Hermes option and click on that. You can see it's aligned to module dimensions or content. So we can adjust that if we want to. We can also adjust the positioning of those. We can adjust the X and Y. So if we change that from 30 and we set that to be 60 pixels, for example, you can see that now brings the left hand side one in a little bit more. Or if we wanted to, we could set that to say 20 pixels and it'll take it out a little bit further. So we can easily adjust that. We've also got animation and we can set the left arrow and we can set the right arrow. So all those things can be set up directly inside you. So let's set that to 20 pixels as well. So everything is looking right. Okay. We've also got the visibility, the show always, and all these different kinds of things. So I would recommend taking a look at those and adjusting it according to what you want inside your specific slider. Now we just hit save on there and we're going to click on preview. We'll now find we have arrows on our screen. So now with those arrows in place, we can easily click to go to the previous slide, click to go to the next slide. And you see with this particular style, we get a little preview of what each of the slides are going to look like. So if you're working with 20 or 30 slides, for example, the user could see exactly what they're going to get next. So that's the easy way of doing that. Now, that's not the only way of doing it. And like I say, this is more a case of showing you a demonstration for how you could do something a little different. Let's disable these arrows. If we go to the slides option at the top, we're going to come down this time to global layers. If we click on that. We're going to get a blank layer that looks exactly the same as any other layer that we just created or any other slide we created. But this is completely different. Anything you place on this global layer or this global slide will apply to every single slide you create. So, for example, if we create our own custom navigation arrows, 
that will apply to every single slide that we create and every single slide that's currently created. Now, while I wouldn't necessarily use this for navigation elements like this, just the forward and back arrows, if you wanted to put in a logo that animates in the top every single time or a button that's going to be evident in the same position every single time, it's quicker and easier to create a global layer. But let me just show you how to do it. What we're going to do is we're going to come up and we're going to create. And from there, we're going to come down and choose icon-svg. We can choose from any of the icons that we have access to. So let's just search for an arrow and we'll just choose this one. So we say arrow left, we'll position that exactly where we want. And if you want to style this in any way, you can style it. So I'm going to set the background color and we're going to set that to be red. And we'll just, okay, that. So now we've got our first arrow in there. So all we need to do now is we're going to apply an animation if we want to, to have this animated in a certain way. But what we want is the actions. So let's click on action again. And what we can do is, because this is to the left, that's going to say the previous. So all we need to do is click on previous slide and we're done. Click previous slide, no delay. So we'll close that down. We we'll do the same thing again now. So we're going to add another layer. I'm going to come down to icon SVG, click on there. Again, choose arrow. This time we're going to choose the forward arrow or the arrow to the right. Click on that. We'll position that over to the right hand side. Obviously, I would make sure to spend the time to make sure that everything is lined perfectly. But for this, it's more a case of just demonstrating. So what we're going to do, come down to the background, change that to red on there, come to our action, and we're going to set that to be next slide. And just close that down, hit save on there, and we've now created our forward and backward navigation arrows. So now we've created those, let's just save them. What we can do then is we can just take a preview and see them in action. So there's our arrows. So you can see, we can click, we go to the next slide, click, go to the next slide, click on the left-hand side, go to the previous slide. Now this is particularly ugly and doesn't look the best, but what it does do is it demonstrates how global layers are very easy to set up. Okay, so that's the basics of how we would create our own custom slider with multiple images, with interaction, with global layers, and so much more. This is really just scratching the surface, but the next thing we need to do before we wrap this video up is I'm going to demonstrate the two ways in which you can insert this into your page. Now, if you're working with a page builder, then a lot of the time they'll already have their own widget. So we'll take a look at that in a moment once we've seen how to do it in the default sort of setup of WordPress, whether you're using Gutenberg or you're using the normal classic editor. Okay, so let's just save this to make sure everything is done. I'm going to come back out of this, and this will take us into the overview page. Now, what we can do is we can come down to our slider and click on this little arrow, and you can see we've got embed. So that's the first thing we have. So we click on embed. You can see this now gives us the short codes and how we can use this in various different ways. Now, there's some advanced methods on here, and there's also some very simple methods. What we're going to do is we're going to use this first most simple method, which is going to insert it into a page or a post. So let's click to copy that. That's now copied that to our clipboard. So we can just come out of this. We'll X to close that down. And what we can do now is we can come over to one of our pages and we say add new. Once we add a new page, you can see we're in the Gutenberg editor. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down underneath that. And what I could do is I can drop in a short code into here. So first of all, let's give the page a title. So we're going to call this Slider Revolution. And then underneath that, we're going to click to add in a new block. And we're going to say short code. I'm going to drop in our short code. You can see there is it already for our short code. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop that in there. There's our short code for it. So now we're done. So if we come over and we click on preview, we'll then get a preview of that. And we should now see there's our slider inserted into our design, all set up using the way that we've done it. Now, like I say, it's not a particularly good looking slider, but it demonstrates how easy it is to insert it into your page using the short code. So let's get rid of that a second, just so we clean things up on here. So we don't want this. We're just going to get rid of that. So let's just remove that, remove our block. We're just going to hit publish on this. And they're going to come in and say, edit with Elementor. Once we've done that, that'll load the Elementor editor. Now, obviously, this is just Elementor, but you will have the same kind of thing if you're using Beaver Builder or using uh, Visual Composer. They should all have the same kind of widgets in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to say slider. And we'll say, there you go. There's our slider revolution widget. So we're going to simply drag that over, drop that in there. And you can see now it allows us to go through and pick which of the sliders we've created do we want to use. So we're going to click to add that in there. And that'll drop in our slider and you can see it works in pretty much exactly the same way. So you can hit apply on there and then we've now got our slider. So let's click on there and let's preview that. Once you preview it, 
there's our slider underneath all embedded into our design. So it's incredibly simple to do using either method, whether you're using a page builder or you're just using WordPress with Gutenberg or the classic editor. You can just simply paste that short code in and then you'll see the slider will just display. And there we go. That's how we create our first multi-image slider inside Slider Revolution 6. Hopefully you found this useful. And if you want to learn more, consider checking out the links you can see in the corner right now. They're going to help you get more out of WordPress, Slider Revolution and everything else we cover on this channel. As always, if you have any comments, questions or feedback, please drop those in the comment section below and all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts and until next time, take care.